I haven't seen any video covering or showing these super bosses and their locations yet, so I figured I'd go ahead and make one of these just for those who might be curious. I plan to show my equipment setup I did for these fights and give a general overview of my fight strategies for those looking to tackle these. Be warned, as since this video is fighting post-game enemies, there will be class spoilers in the video, so do be careful if you want to keep watching. And as always, if you enjoy my content and want to see more Xenoblade 3 guides, be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's go! So, for my setup, I did a pretty standard 2 tanks, 2 attackers, 2 healers setup. You can probably switch this up some if needed, but I find it's the most beneficial for all chain attack bonuses and helping the team's consistency. I'm sure I could go for more damage when I get more optimal equipment and all that later on. I didn't have this full setup on my initial fight against the super bosses, but super bosses have a unique mechanic in this game where each time you beat them, you can re-challenge them at a higher level all the way to 200, and I want to show the final one at 200 to showcase that as well. And this setup helps a lot when these bosses become higher and higher leveled and more challenging. I ran Noah in the Seraph class because it's one of the highest damage attacking classes and comes with some very strong abilities. Inferno Dance in particular is one of the highest damage ratios in the game at 500%, and combined with Hidden Thorn makes for a very powerful fusion art setup for chain attacks. Two of the default skills are increasing damage when under 30% health, and increasing damage when attacking a toppled or launched enemy, which is very strong. For master skills, I have an increase to physical damage, an increase to my critical hit damage, and an increase to damage when my health is high, so I can get either this or the under 85% skill almost all the time. Gem setup is increasing attack, dexterity for accuracy, and bonus to critical hits, again, because critical hits are very strong. Most damage will come from chain attacks, so I don't need empowered combo. Accessories are also pretty damage focused, with Ceramic Belt offering a 31% attack boost, Pretty strong in this game since it directly modifies how much base damage you do that everything gets multiplied by. Fiber wraps to increase damage to launch enemies further since I want to launch enemies before chain attacking. And platinum cube to offer a damage boost to fusion arts, which is what all arts and chain attacks are. Mio is in her default class of Zephyr, and I attempted to set her up as a strong agility tank with some face tanking qualities too, because keeping her alive is important. Her master skills are increasing physical damage to better keep aggro, Defensive Soul to get a boost to damage mitigation, and Evasion Expertise to dodge ranged attacks at an even greater frequency. For gem setup, I have increased agility by 35 to evade more, increased block rate by 30 percentage points for more damage mitigation, and increased attack by 70 to help her damage. Accessories are all three high percentage stat boosts, one to agility, one to max HP, and one to attack to make her as tanky as possible while allowing her to keep aggro better with the attack boosts. Uni is a Full Metal Jaguar, which is one of the strongest DPS classes in the game, with Fatal Barrage being one of the strongest attacks for chain attacks since it always gets its positional bonus. All of her fusion arts have the ability to evade enemy attacks as well, allowing you to have a lot of control over survivability if you control her yourself. One of the main draws of FMJ is the 255% damage boost if you don't miss attacks, and you cannot miss at all in chain attacks. My master skills are boosting damage from Aether Arts by 50%, Universal Annihilation to do more damage to launched enemies, and critical hit bonus, which may seem strange with only a 10% critical hit rate, but the independent multiplier is still very strong. And my Master Arts have weapons with a better critical hit rate as well. Gems are the same as Noah, Strength, Dexterity, and Critical Damage. Similar to Noah, I have a damage boost to launched enemies, and I also have a general attack boost with a ceramic belt. And finally, I have Lune Rings on her, which is a 100% boost to Fusion Arts compared to Noah's, who is only 55. Lunae Rings are a unique accessory where there's only one in the entire game, so that is the reason I have only one, and it is on Uni, because it is very, very powerful, and I want to have it on my strongest DPS character. Tyan is a Signifer, though more of the AI-controlled Signifer, taking care of reviving duties and a lot of healing. Signifer is a very strong class for buff effects. The master skills I have on it are increasing buff duration, filling the talent gauge at the start of combat so he can instantly grant the party two random buffs, which can help against super bosses who control one shot of DPS at the start sometimes. And finally, Abundant Oceans, which reduces all party damage by 15% and increases healing by 15%. So this is a very, very nice party support effect for survivability. It does not stack, however. Gem setup is boosting the power of buff effects by 50%, reviving with more HP. As it turns out, this gem is actually a lot better than I thought initially because the percentage is actually additive, even though the wording doesn't make it appear additive. So it's very useful for harder super bosses such as leveled up and on hard mode, and especially for setups like mine, which probably isn't super optimized yet. And of course, faster revives, which is always good as well, just for maximum safety. Accessories include Solus Rings to give a boost to healing, Devotional Necklace to give him all of his arts back when he revives anyone, and Crystal Earrings to get Chain Attack Gauge when he uses an art to get that up sooner. 
Lons is a lone exile. This is a pretty strong offensive focused tank that functions well alongside Mio. The master skills are increasing party accuracy and evasion 20% because trust me that is very strong and useful as a skill to have when tackling the strongest enemies. I also have a damage boost to launch to enemies on him and increasing critical damage as well to give him some strong damage both inside and outside of chain attacks. My gem setup is empowered combo because I don't really have a super amazing better option but if the AI doesn't actually cancel like I thought they did, you may just want to run aggro up on him. Increasing attack by 70 is nice, and increasing block rate by 30 percentage points for extra damage mitigation is also very nice. For his accessories, I have a boost to his maximum HP, a break brooch to give him a higher break chance so I can get launches easier, and also crystal earrings to get party meter faster. Senna is also a signifer, and the main character I control in most of these, and especially when taking on the higher leveled versions of these. A very important art setup change I have is binding Shadow Eye to the same slot as Resonant Flag, so I can always pass on an attack boost, and also not use up power charge and chain attack since I'm not actually attacking when using this. Master skills are extending buff duration, boosting recharge speed when a defender isn't targeted so I can spam buffs faster if things are going poorly, and Essence of Aether which increases party-wide attack by 30% and reduces enemy block rate. The final very nice party buff to have. If you don't want to run Ty and a Signifer also, Trobador and Life Sage are great options as well for healing and boosting recharge on arts. Gem setup is increasing power and duration of buffs by 50% since I will be stacking buffs like a madman as fast as possible because this class is broken, and increasing revival speed if I need to get the other healer up. Accessories are another boost to recharge speed if a non-defender is targeted once again for even more buff spam in the worst case scenarios, carbon gloves to boost dexterity in case I need to land more attacks to recharge arts, and crystal earrings for the party gauge. And finally, I have Ashura, mostly here for a chain attack strength, but providing a backup additional tank as needed and my hero slot. Well, that was a lot, so let's move on to the actual fights now. The first super boss can be found in the Forness region a little bit north of the Saffron Tree. Northwest, I should say. Killicorn Grand Depths. Now, it starts out at level 95. I did not record the level 95 version before realizing I should probably record this stuff, so I challenged it at level 100 here just to showcase that you can keep increasing these super boss levels over time. And as you can see there, Uni gets instantly one-shotted because the super bosses are very funny like that, and that is one of the reasons that I changed my setup when I started fighting them even more powerful to make sure that Tyon could revive them even higher health. Regardless though, this fight isn't too bad overall. Mio and Lon shouldn't have too much trouble tanking it, especially because at this time I didn't really have, like, all the extra tank stats on them that I had later on. But regardless, not really a huge deal. I'm just going to be buff stacking with Senna basically the entire fight, as you might be seeing. Also stacking up my inner link at the same time to level 2 or 3. This was also before I put Crystal Earrings on everyone, so my party meter charges up slower than it could otherwise. If it charged up faster, I could end the fights earlier by getting the launch sooner and going for the chain attack faster. But regardless, you can probably see just how funny um, Signifer is as a class and how you can just stack buffs very quickly because Oriole has a 3-hit cooldown. So you can just spam a single buff over and over. Um, Heal Harmony and Advanced cooldown give charge of your Talon Art, which gives a bunch of um, extra buffs as well. So there's just a really a bunch of really funny things you can do here. So my general strategy here is to just spam a couple arts with Senna, swap to Lanja's Ouroboros, and then go for the launch combo. Sometimes you get the break with Senna or with someone else and they launch automatically so you don't have to do that. And then I leave the Ouroboros form from level 3 and chain attack. If you're level 3, you'll get that random Ouroboros finisher instead of um, the longer and better, more powerful chain attack. So, unless you know you can kill with that Ouroboros finisher, I probably would not do that. I think I get trolled by my D-pad here, because I wanted to use Uni, but, um, for some reason it didn't scroll to her, so I ended up using Mio in a really awkward spot. Fortunately, it doesn't really end up mattering too much, because you get plenty of damage anyway, and it's only level 100 right now. But basically, once you're in the chain attack, once the enemy's launched, as long as you've got a good chain attack set up, you're basically golden. Especially if you get Ashura in the first set of orders, you'll basically just be free to kind of just go ham. You can use three, like, two DPS and then a healer and then Asher, and you're guaranteed to get all three of your other characters back. You can use a DPS, a tank, and a healer. As, lo as long as you are not going over 100 before using Asher, you're basically fine, because you're guaranteed to get that amazing with Asher, and that's very, very helpful when that happens. So I end up using um, Noah's attack first in the combo here to give him some more TP for later on in the fight. And then I'm going to use Senna to charge everyone up again. 
So, as you can notice, I'm giving everyone an attack boost every time I'm using that, and I can also keep using and passing power charge, because Senna's not actually attacking, so she can continuously give everyone the power charge, which increases the damage of your art, over and over throughout this fight, without me having to do much of anything. This is also one reason you might not need Ty and a Signifer, because he could might be better in a different ta um, class, because Senna can kind of carry the buffs, but I did him as Signifer just to be safe with even extra buffs, because why not? So, I'm not going to show off the entire, like, full chain attack sequence for all these just until I get the overkills for most of them until, like, the very last one. Just because, um, otherwise this video would take way longer than it should with just me, like, going ham with extra damage that is completely unnecessary. Like, you can see right here that I've still got another two rounds of the chain attack. I've got another, um, round of a character I can use, and then I have the Ouroboros round, and I'm still going to get the overkill even before that because if you got a really strong setup, you can just kind of destroy these enemies even in chain attacks. As long as you can get to the chain attack. But it does get harder. It's harder on hard mode, obviously. And it's definitely harder when the enemies are higher level too. Because you've got to be a lot more careful. Make sure you can actually hit the enemies. Make sure you've got your party buffs and everything like that. Moving on though, the second super boss is located in the Aedia region at Cooley Lake. You can only access Cooley Lake from the upper region, the snow area, in order to get here. So you're not going to be able to find this on the general full map unless you go down to it from the, first, from the upper area. But you can find it at Cooley Lake. It is level 100, that is the starting level of it, this is the first fight you do against it. And the more annoying thing about this enemy is he seems to have very high break resist, even compared to the other super bosses. I was having a lot of trouble trying to break him, so I ended up having to do a chain attack without getting a launch, which still ended up working fine, just because my base total damage right now is extremely high. But you can definitely get even more damage. Again, I'm just general strategy of Control Senna here because it's just kind of the most brain-dead option because of just how ridiculously stupid and broken this class is. Because you can just pass on, like, 10-plus buffs because Monolith is very, very good at balancing. Really, just any time you're struggling with a fight, just control this class and you'll probably be fine. You might want to control a different class, though, and I completely understand that. I, it might be more fun at some points, although I just have a lot of fun playing this class just because of how hilarious it is. But it does, it, and it also just does make fights really, really easy, I think. So even though Mio did end up dying here, as you can see, I'm level 95. I'm not even max level for these first two super bosses. It doesn't really matter, because um, we've still got two tanks alive. Tyon's supposed to be reviving, but he's in the Ouroboros form right now, so that's why he's not. But everyone else is completely fine because of all the buffs they have. So now that Tyon's out, he'll probably go revive Mio, which will be very nice. Now... The fight keeps going because I'm going to try to go for um, the break combo a little bit, even though I probably could have just chain attacked right here if I would have realized that I'm not going to get that break. But not really a major deal overall. I was also waiting for my allies to be revived. Of course, Uni died while I was waiting for Mio to be revived that time because sometimes you are just that lucky. And at this point, I'm just trying to get buffs back on everyone. Uh, Uni still needs the buffs back. So now she has them, and we should be good to go. I should be interlinking soon here. There it is. So now I'm going to be going for charge up with Senna, my talent art, swapping two lawns, going for the launch combo. He ends up resisting the break, so we don't get it there. But I have another chance before my Ouroboros runs out, so I'm going to swap back to Senna, do the same thing. Senna also just has a lot of base damage on her Ouroboros hits in general, especially if you maxed out the tree. So that's nice. Like, we're doing over 50,000 with these hits here, which is pretty cool. 100,000 on that one, which is really nice. So I swap back to Lons, go for one more combo, doesn't work. And now I'm probably just going to chain attack when the form expires. So there we go. You can't actually chain attack until you're out from above the head of the water. So, like, when you get out of the Ouroboros form, you're, like, underwater. It doesn't let you chain attack until after that for some reason. And at this point, we're just going to be doing kind of a similar strategy here. Uni, Noah attacking first round if we can. Although, I think this is, since I did um, Noah's bonus, I'm actually going to go over the cap here. Since he's an attacker class, I wasn't actually thinking, I just kind of, like, did it mindlessly. So it's Asher, I, I'm used to Asher being the option when I'm going for the most powerful chain attacks. Luckily, it doesn't really matter again anyway. I also still don't get Asher here, so I have to use Uni's order. And, um... One interesting thing is that Uni's Ouroboros form actually gets a buff for how many buffs are on, or, or a damage bonus, I should say, for how many buffs are currently on all ally party members, up to 500% extra damage. And you can also pass that skill to Tyon, 
And if you do that, their Ouroboros finisher will do insane amounts of damage. Like, they both get the 500% bonus if you do that, because a lot of characters will still have power charge at the end, and they'll all have the attack buff. So, you'll just end up maxing out that 500% on both of them, and they'll have the, the strongest finisher of any Ouroboros, or even stronger than Noah and Senna, who are the attacker class Ouroboroses. So that's another additional benefit of using at least Uni as DPS, but using Tyan as DPS too would probably give you the most damage just because you'd want to guarantee get their finishers. And then Noah would probably be the best third option just because, or Senna even, for just more DPS if you're just trying to go for a max damage chain attack, which I haven't necessarily really tried to go for just yet at least. So I finally get the completion bonus of um, Asher here, who's going to grant power charge. We actually already had power charge because it was a buff granted before the chain attack by one of my signifers, which is really nice. And um, we can get it here too. I would have been fine regardless either way because there's still another two rounds of this attack. We've got this round and then the Ouroboros round. Because Tyon does not appear here, I was going to end up getting Noah's Ouroboros anyway which is not really a huge deal because we're already doing plenty of damage here, and I'm going to end the fight once we get the overkill, so not really a big deal. Easy fight, not too bad at all, just couldn't get the break. But if your damage is strong enough, you don't even need a breaker launch, even if a lot of my setup is tailored to that. Although it does definitely help later on, and it would help a lot on hard mode where chain attacks are gimped pretty hard. The next super boss is located in Lower Mac the Wildwood, towards the bottom right inside of this cave, Dreadworm Nizunt. I don't know how you pronounce that, but it's a pretty funny looking name regardless. Here is our obli obligatory dragon super boss. And once again, I'm just kind of going for the same strategies here where I control Senna. This is still before I have my, like, really strong party AoE buff setup and um, extra defensive abilities on everyone. I'm kind of just, like, winging at this point even still, but I do finally, I am finally level 99 for the super boss, so I did finally max my level out, so that's nice. And once again, if you're wondering why Ashura is my hero of choice, I don't know if I explained it fully. She's really strong in chain attacks. If you finish a round with her, you get a guaranteed amazing. So that's really, really valuable, especially on round one when TP is pretty low. And if you use her order, she gives an extra 200% damage ratio to the chain attack. And she also grants the entire party power charge. The 200% damage ratio is just really nice in general for increasing damage even further. And power charge increases the damage of your next art by a lot. And if you have Senna, you can even continuously pass that buff even after people have already used up Power Charge, granting even more and more powerful chain attacks, which is pretty insane. So I end up getting um, my Ouroboros level 3 pretty early here, and I'm close to having my chain attack already, so I end up going for a launch combo pretty early on in this fight. And this ended up being one of the faster fights, because I think I actually get it pretty quickly here. Yep, I get the break, I get the topple. Get the launch, and we get our chain attack. So I'm going to cancel the form and then go for the chain attack. That was only about a minute outside of the chain attack that time. So I probably got some good defensive buffs early on, maybe evasion, maybe a decoy, which helped me not take too many hits or have too much issue with this. And fortunately, I get the actual combination I want at the start of this fight here. So I'm able to get a really good fight here. I could have used Senna there, I probably should have, just to increase our TP a little bit. But I do get the 200% here that I want. And the Amazing, and we also get Power Charge in every one to increase our damage even further. So Noah's the best option here of these chain orders. I would have preferred Uni or Tyon to start out with so I don't raise TP too high. Because I think Uni might actually hit 80 here. No, okay, she didn't. All right. If you hit 80, you're guaranteed to get 100 with the 25% multiplier there. So that you kind of don't want to do that, if you can help it. If I was really smart, I would have just used Noah there instead of using Senna at all, because I could have just gotten both Uni and Noah back, because they would have hit over 150. But I didn't think about it at the time. So now I'm only going to get two out of the three back. So there's really no point in using Senna there. And I don't get Uni back, but it doesn't really matter for this round. I get kind of another bad order there. I still don't get Uni or Tyon, so I'm not going to be able to get their finisher no matter what. So I end up just going for Mio, and I'm like, well, I can finish this with just the Ouroboros finisher. I'm going to lose a round of the chain attack since the Ouroboros is going to show up next round, but it doesn't really matter that much because the damage is plenty high, as you can imagine. If you're going for quicker kills, you may even want to do the level 3 Ouroboros chain. It can definitely work, I think. So in a lot of these fights, at least. 
Although you might not have power charge from Ashtara if you do that, so that's something to keep in mind. So Mio ends up finishing the fight by herself just for her special move. And then you have the Ouroboros Chain Order if you really want to use it. But that's really about all there is to this fight. Not too bad at all. The fourth super boss is in the Cadetia region, in the very bottom right corner here in the ocean. You have to reach it by the boat, and then you have to swim to the super boss all the way in the corner here. We've got another really cool looking super boss here, Levia Lord Imperio. Levia Lord, I don't know how you pronounce this at all. Level 110 starting out. This is another water fight, so you can get water bonuses in this fight if you really want them. And my first time fighting it, I would say this might be one of the harder ones. Um, I actually think the one after this, at, at least level 120, the initial level it starts at, is a little easier than this one. But that might just be because fighting in water can be a little annoying, and I didn't have a great setup when I did this fight at the time. Whereas I got a better setup when I was increasing levels a little bit later. But regardless, you can still kind of do the same thing here and kind of just autopilot with Senna and be okay for a lot of it. Tyan ends up dying, that's the main problem for sure, because you need to go revive him as Senna if you do if that happens. And it ends up happening again because, uh, yeah, the fight's going kind of south at this point, but it is recoverable, thankfully. As long as I'm reviving Tyon and Tyon's reviving other people. Well, I think at this point I'm just going to help revive because uh, we're kind of in a bad spot. I need to get my characters alive as fast as possible. For some reason I'm forgetting the dash move exists and I probably should be using that. I think it works in water. I would be surprised if it did not. So I've got everyone alive now. Luckily Mio's alive and she's doing a pretty good job of keeping aggro and evasion tanking. Of course now Noah has taken her out of her evasion tanking. And Uni dies again. Believe it or not, I recover from this fight, though. Mostly because Tyan and Uni, everyone goes and gets alive at the same time. Tyan and Uni go into an Ouroboros for invincibility. And then I've got level 3 with Senna and Lons. So I'm able to um, go for a combo here. It gets resisted. But Uni and Tyan are still safe. Although I end up taking um, them out of their Ouroboros form because I need Tyan to go revive Noah before I even think about chain attacking. So I once again... Go back to controlling these three and get the launch, and then I'm able to cancel that, and then I gotta wait to come at, back from up from the water to chain attack, and then we chain attack on the launch with everyone alive. And now from here, the fight is basically won, thankfully. Just a little sketchy to get there. Uni's one of the better completion bonuses you can get early on in this fight, because she can... Reduce Aether Defense, and that's pretty valuable early on, since Uni's all of her damage is Aether, and she's our strongest DPS. So, that helps a lot. We can pass an attack boost everyone with Senna. And then Asher will give everyone Power Charge. I'll show the entire Ouroboros finisher in the last Super Boss fight, just because I think that'll be beneficial to showcase just what kind of damage you can get if you've got all the buffs stacked and get a finisher with Uni or Tyon. Because it is very powerful with that 500% bonus, and that is something that I really like a lot. I also really like the ability to attack to stack um, attack buffs on everyone along with power charges by passing everything with Senna every round, just because you don't have to worry about her losing it if she's not actually attacking. So, Signifer, very funny class. I really like it. Very, very interesting. So I'll go ahead and use Uni here because I learned from last time that I can get over 150% if I have a Noah Order second round. And this is very useful because I can get both of them back. I'm guaranteed, guaranteed to have all six of my party members for the next round. So I can be careful of who I pick. Although if I pick either Noah or Uni, they're guaranteed to immediately go over 100. So I'm not going to pick either of them currently. I am just going to get some extra damage out with Mio and Lons, I believe. Looks like I'm thinking hard about it. Right now, they're a bit more set up for damage, so they're going to be doing a little bit there. And then I go for Uni here. I probably should have just used Senna, but I didn't want to not have Senna for the round after this. And if I don't get Uni back, it doesn't really matter too much at this point. So I'm not too worried about it. And of course, that ends up being what happens, because why wouldn't it be? I do get Ty on here, so I'm going to... Go for a bit more damage with Mio and um, Lons, who now have Power Charge back. Or actually, I just go for it with Lons. 
And then I get um, Tyon to use his pass there. And then Senna uses her pass to get the damage and attack buff on everyone again. And then I'm going to use Noah to finish this fight off, I believe. Yep, easy enough. Nice 3 million hit there. Not too bad. The final super bosses are located at the Great Sword Upper in the Cavity. You have to have beaten all four other super bosses in order to fight this enemy. And you have to have a conversation with the camp afterwards. It has a unique theme, and I'm going to be fighting it at level 200 just because I think it's really cool. Just to be able to stack up boss levels, and I think it would be a very hype way to end this video, just to showcase the boss at its maximum potential, I guess. At least on normal mode. I haven't done this on hard mode yet. Because you have to restack the entire level mechanic on hard mode, so I have to get them all the way back to 200 on hard mode. So, you can see this fight's going very, very well at the start, especially on level 200. So, fortunately though, I'm able to um, not die at the start. And Noah's able to get revived. Tyon has the ability to revive people with more HP, so Mio dying there is not a huge deal. And I get enough buffs stacked up here at this point to where I'm a lot safer. Everyone's restoring health. I've got defense bonuses, and we're basically okay from here on out. Except for Uni. Uni was not very lucky there, but not a big deal at the current moment in time. Tyon should revive her with a decent amount of health. In these fights against level 200 enemies, when you raise the super bosses levels, defensive abilities are actually pretty important. And, yeah, this is the most necessary, I think, healers have ever been in the franchise, at least right now. Maybe we'll all discover some more optimal setups later. But I'm, I'm very impressed with how interesting these fight strategies end up being, just and how you want to approach them and um, deal with these enemies. Like, I have all of the party buffs that you can possibly get on my master skills. I've got some really powerful... Um, Damage dealers, I've got probably the best healer class in the game, just stacking buffs on everyone, and it's still going pretty dangerously, even on normal mode. So I'm very excited to see what happens on hard mode, and if I'll need to change up my setups even further in order to beat that. Probably need to finish finding all the good accessories, maybe even find and grind some of the more powerful ones for everyone. We'll see what happens with that. But as you can see, fortunately Signifer is at a hilariously broken class, and I'm able to just stack buffs on everyone constantly. Um... Even as a healer class, it might just be the best class in the game just because of how it enables everything else, which is really, really nice. Mio and Noah and Uni and Tyan are both safe right now, being in Ouroboros forms, but they're about to come out. And now I'm going to be transforming into my level 3 Ouroboros with Senna and Lons, and I'm going to be going for um, the same strategy I normally use, where I just charge up the talent art with Senna and then go for a break with Lons, the launch combo with his talent art. I actually already get the break from just using Senna's attack, so she has a chance of doing that, so that was pretty nice. So I can just get the top one launch pretty easily here, which is really nice against level 200 enemy. Was not expecting it that early. So I go for the chain attack on the launch, and now I'm going to showcase just kind of how to get the best damage you possibly can in chain attacks. I don't get the perfect start here, because obviously Asher would be the perfect start to get the most damage possible, just because you'd be able to get that extra 200% ratio and power charge on everyone sooner. But I'm not going to have power charge the next round, unfortunately, or the extra damage ratio. Fortunately, it's not too big of a deal, because I can still get an attack buff past everyone with Senna here. With um, Resonant Flag, one of the most broken arts I've ever seen in these games. So glad Monolith knows how to balance properly. I do finish with Ash here to get the 200% um, guaranteed amazing. Just so I can get all three characters back and um, get some extra damage ratio out of that, at least. We also lower the Aether Defense by 50% at first round, so that's not too bad. And now we get Asher around two, so we'll have Power Charge after this round, and that'll be very, very nice. Go ahead and use Uni again, who can put on some extra damage here. While he does look like he has a lot of health right now, that is not a big deal. Because, um, like I said, most of our damage just comes from Chain Attacks in this case. Especially when you can get the proper setup going on. I think without Launch, this enemy would not have been possible to kill at level 200, though. Because... Quite a lot of health, quite a lot of extra defenses, it feels like. And just in general, pretty strong enemy. I think this level stacking mechanic is really, really interesting, though. And um, adds a lot of replay value, I think. You're able to challenge it at the highest level after beating it like 10 times or so, I think. That's what the star little star difficulty system was, at least, as you might have seen. And once you beat it at level 200, you get like a gold medal on the um, tombstone, if I remember correctly. But if you do it on a different difficulty, it completely resets and you have to do it again. I discovered that when I was like, well, I'm going to try 200 hard mode, and I couldn't do it yet. So 
That's a bit too much of a grind for me right now, because hard mode fights take longer because the, your chain attacks are gimped quite a bit. Although, I will say that level 120 on hard is a lot easier than level 200 on normal, so level increases is definitely more of a difficulty spike than um, difficulty increase in a case like this. Although level 200 on hard should definitely be very, very interesting, and I'm looking forward to trying it out and seeing what I can do with it. Back to the actual fight itself, I'm going for the tie-on finish here, here because getting tie-on and you need to be used both in the same chain attack means I've got one of their two finishers, and I find that to be very, very valuable because it's just a very, very strong attack if you've got buffs on everyone like I do right here. Because Unizoroboros form has a skill that grants her extra damage the more buffs are on all of your allies, up to 500% extra damage, and you can pass the skill to tie on Zoroboros. And if they both have it, they'll just do some absolutely massive damage as a finisher. Like, uh, almost like 40 to 30 to 40 percent of the actual chain attack damage just by themselves, just from that, which is really, really strong. Uni by herself is almost going to wipe out the rest of his health bar here, but if she didn't, it would have been fine anyway, because I'm about to just do some absolutely crazy damage in the actual Ouroboros finisher. So, Tyan's attack here, I believe it does over 3 million damage even without getting a critical hit, which is pretty insane. And that's not even the end of the attack yet. Uni's Ouroboros still has yet to attack herself, which is going to do a lot of extra chunk damage there. And we also have that little wimpy attack when they're not in the Ouroboros form, which is funny. And then we have some over a million hits, four hits total, so that's pretty good. If you go back and check the Gravestone after defeating it, like I said, you'll be able to see a little golden medal at the top left of this thing there. And you'll also be able to see your best time for the challenge fights, so... If you ever want to challenge it again, you can. As far as I'm aware, you cannot challenge it at any other levels once you get it to, like, a certain level. So if you're challenging it, you're basically stuck at level 200 if you get it there. And like I said, it resets for every difficulty, so on hard mode, it'll reset back to level 125, and you'll have to refight it from there to get it all the way back to 200 again. Regardless, though, it's a really cool mechanic, adds a lot of replay value that the other games do not have, and makes the super bosses a lot more fun to challenge and take on. So I'm a really big fan of it. Regardless, though, I think that's going to cover it for me for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching or have learned something about the combat system to help you tackle these super bosses easier and have a good time with the system. And if you guys want to, make sure to support me by subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed this and want to see more guides on the game, want to see something about accessories, want to see class guides, just want to learn everything you can about Xenoblade 3. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, and all the kind of other stuff you might want to do to support me, and I will greatly, greatly appreciate it. I will be making a lot more content on this game in the future. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, thanks for the support, and have a wonderful and blessed day.